Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 95th, wow, yeah, 95th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Alright, today we are going to learn how to read XML. But, you notice how I put DOM at the end. It stands for Document Object Model. There's actually two main types of reading of XML, if that makes any sense. But anyways, there's two main types. There's Document Object Model and SAX, S-A-X. So, put this in the usual location. Um, the difference between the two is DOM, Document Object Model, which we're going to learn today. Um, you read the entire document, then parse through and get what you want. SAX, S-A-X, on the other hand, parses the document as it reads it. Um, there's kind of a religious holy war going on about which is the correct version. Um, personally, I like DOM, but, you know, that's just me. Like I said, personal preference. All right, so let's just dive right in here. First thing we're going to do is include Qt Core. I'm going to add our other includes here. Qt XML, and for good measure, let's just do uh, Qt Debug. Now let's put right at the top here. the document object model method of reading, help if I could spell reading, XML. Um, as I said, uh, DOM will read the entire document, then allow you to parse through it, where SAX or SAX, you actually uh, parse it as you read it. Um, not going to get into which one's better, that's personal preference. So first thing we need to do is actually load the document. So let's go Q DOM document and then we will load the file so say Q file and of course we want our file name and don't worry if you don't have this file uh, it's going to be included with the source code out on my website and let me pull it up here real quick this is what our document looks like when you're reading XML, specifically through DOM, you need to know the structure of the document you're going to be working with. Um, as I said, to be well-structured, as it's called, an XML document needs to have one root and only one root. So book, that element is the root element. Then underneath book, we have a bunch of books. Each one has an attribute of ID and name, and each book element has some chapter elements. Each one has an ID and a name attribute. And we could have kept going and going and going, but for simplicity's sake, we're just as, as complex as we're going to do. So let's dive back in here. So we've got our file. And help if I actually gave it the right path here. I'm sorry, I was looking off on my hard drive to see what was going on. And then we'll say, if not file open, and we want to open the QIO device read only. And do it in text mode. So if we couldn't open it, then we just want to say Q debug. And we'll just say, failed to open file. And return negative one, meaning we're just going to return an error code. I'm really trying to uh, come up with some ideas for our 100th video. That was kind of my goal here, was to get 100 cute tutorials by the end of summer. And Well, I didn't meet that goal by a while. I think the end of summer was last week. But you know what? We're going to keep trudging on anyways. And then what we're going to do next, sorry, lost my train of thought here, is if document, set content, and this is where you're actually loading the content, and you're just going to give it a reference to that file, and Qt will take care of the loading of the document automatically, and just return a Boolean value saying, hey, I actually want to say if not loaded, it's going to say, hey, I loaded it, or hey, I had a problem, and so we're just going to say, failed to load document,
And that's how we actually populate our XML document, our Q DOM document. It is just set content, reference to file. And then of course, you know, we want to do a file close in here. That way that is closed. And right here, get the root element. So what we want to do next is just say QDOM element and let's just for argument's sake call it root equal document dot first child element. What that'll do is that will get the root element of this document. Now let's just um, give this a good compile and run just to see what happens here. I want to make sure we can actually do this. It didn't print any failure notices out, so we know we did good. It actually loaded that up and found the root element. So let's actually just throw a QDebug finished in here. That way we know it finishes without any problem. But yeah, um, if you guys got any um, ideas, feedback, about what the 100th Qt tutorial should be, let me know. Um, try to keep it somewhat simplistic. I don't want to, you know, write a, a full 3D first-person shooter like Quake, although that would be fun. It would take in a horrendously long amount of time, and I don't think uh, I could actually upload that file to YouTube anyway, so. All right, now, we have our root element. List the books. This is where we're going to break off. We're going to make a function, and the reason why is, let's look at this file. I'm a big, big fan of design patterns. And what a design pattern would be is you see book and chapter have a very similar structure. The only thing really different is the tag element, book and chapter. They both have an attribute of ID. They both have an attribute of name. So you could say, write a function that pulls that data out, and it could be a book or a chapter. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Let's scroll up here. So we're just going to make our void and let's just call it list elements and we want to give it some parameters here let's say qdom document element whoops we want to get the element at this that it's at and we're just going to call this root because that's the root element of whatever we're passing over not to be confused with this element root. Let me jump over to the file here. See, for this element right here, its root would actually be book ID 3. Book ID 3's root element would actually be this books tag. Now, I know some of you um, XML geeks out there are going to argue, well, actually, the root element is always going to be books. This is a, a cute tutorial, not an XML tutorial. Let it go. Take a deep breath. All right, now, Q string. And we want tag name and Q string. We'll say attribute. We want to be able to pull out the tag name and the attribute. All right, now let's Q. Whoops. Dom node list. And what this is is it gets a list of nodes from an element. And we're going to call this items equal root dot elements by tag name. And what this will do is it'll extract all the elements with a similar tag name, hence the variable tag name. So what you do is you pass this function, you say, okay, I want a list of all the elements that start with book. So it'll give you a list of all the elements that start with book or chapter, etc., etc. And it'll do that based off the current element you pass it to, a.k.a. our root element. All right, now we just want to throw a queue debug out here. And we'll say total items. Equal. And we want to say items.count. That way we just have an idea of the total items here. And then let's just go for int i equals zero. And we'll say i less than items count. And then we want to, of course, do a increment here. Well, 
While I love doing these videos, I'm developing a very nasty habit of talking to myself. I think I had an entire conversation with myself out in the kitchen, and I don't think I won that argument. So, I think my daughter's been starting to look at me a little funny. And what we're going to do next is we're going to just extract that node. So we'll say, at. So we're going to get that, that node item at that index. Now, what's the difference between a node and an element? Anybody? Show of hands? Well, and this is my rough understanding. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. But a node could be anything in the document. An element is an actual element item. Whereas a node could be any little part of this. So what we would need to do now is actually convert that to an element. Now, why do they do that? Well, because it's easier to just parse everything and generically call it a node and then examine it later to see if it's actually an element. Item node is element. So we're saying if it is an element, then do some magic. So we'll get our element here and we'll just call this item Ellie. Don't ask me where I get these names. A couple of you wrote in going, Brian, why don't you use camel case? Cute uses it and I think you should too. Well, that's an excellent point and you know, I'm very sorry I haven't been doing it. Um, unfortunately, I've gotten spoiled with other languages and I get kind of in a hurry. So there's really no excuse for it other than just sheer laziness on my part. I have to admit that. And I will try to do a better job in the future. Now we want to get our attribute here. And the attribute is, of course, going to be the attribute variable that we're passing to it, the ID or name. So quick review. We're going to actually just copy this real quick. We open our file. Once the file's open, we set the document's contents with the file's contents. If we can't, we say, eh, tough luck, and then we return, close the file, um, find the root element, which is the first child element. Then we want to call our function here, which lists the books. In this case, we are actually calling root. And we want to look for book and we want the, hmm, let's say the name attribute. That way it's a little more obvious what's going on here. So we will call this, jump back up here, and first thing it does is it grabs a QDOM node list, which is just a list of uh, elements here, or actually sorry, a list of nodes based on the tag name. Remember this is going to be book. Gives us the total items and then for each one it just goes through and says, okay, is it an element? If so, convert it and then print out the attribute, which will be name. See, we're getting name here. So let's save and run. Fingers crossed. Everything goes good. We get this. Total items 10. My book 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Finished. Pretty neat stuff, huh? So we've gotten those. Now how do we get the chapters out of here? Hmm. Well, if you think about it, chapters just just a child element of each book. So it won't be too hard for us to actually extract that out. So let's actually, whoop, give me one second, I gotta pause it. Sorry about that, my uh, newer cat. Um, if, if any of you guys remember from previous videos, one of my cats died and I got a new cat. Well, the new cat is fascinated with light bulbs. Don't ask me why, I don't understand it myself. So I'm sitting in my little office, typing away, making this beautiful tutorial for you, and he walks up and just starts swatting the light bulb in the lamp. Now one of these days, I'm going to come home to a fried cat. I know that. I've just come to terms with that. But until then, I'm trying to keep little guy away from the light bulbs. Anybody else have cats that do weird things like that, let me know, because he's just really got me freaked out here. All right, so now we're going to get the chapters. And if anybody thought this was going to be a for loop, you are absolutely right.
Hmm. We skipped a step here, didn't we? Yes, we did. Let me back up here and comment this out. Got a little ahead of myself. Sorry, I'm watching my cat out of the corner of my eye. Little orange demon. So what we're going to do is get a QDOM node list. This should look familiar because we just used it. We're going to call it books. And we're going to say root elements by tag name. So what we're going to do is say get a list of books. And then we're going to jump into our for loop here. And then for each node item in each book, we're going to rip through this and we're going to say QDOM node. And if you're asking yourself, hmm, there's probably a better way of doing this. Yes, you're right, there is probably a better way of doing this. I'm doing it this way simply for illustration to show you basically bare bones without getting too complex into how this works, just exactly how it works. So, so we're going to get the book at position i, or I should say at index i. Once again, convert to an element. If book node is element. And this should look really familiar from the function we wrote earlier. So if it's an element, then we get the element. And we'll just call it book. Kitty, I'm watching you. Quit swatting that light bulb. And then we want to just say uh, list elements book because that's our that's going to be our root chapter because that's what we want to look for and name. Save this. Run it. Now our output is total items. Hmm, we've got our chapters here. Now if you notice, if you scroll up, here's our first attempt. You've got your books, and then we're getting the chapters out of each book. Let's polish this up a little bit. Alright, so Let's throw in a debug statement here. And this might make it a little clearer what's going on here. out the attribute from the book element. Let's rerun this. Now you see it's a little clearer. We did our initial where we get all our books. Now we're doing a more advanced method where we're saying chapters in my book zero because my book zero is the first one and then we're getting the individual chapters and chapters in my book one, two, three, four, five, I mean all the way up. So that's how you recursively parse through these. Now there are some flaws in this application. I'll leave that up to you to kind of pick and find them. Um, one thing I would really recommend if you're going to do a lot of XML programming is get really used to just, you know, streamlining your code. Don't do a bunch of nestled for loops and if-thens. Really use functions. I mean, really use the power of the language you're working with. Don't just do a bunch of, you know, recursive if-then for elses and I mean, your code will just look horrendous. So that is how, in a nutshell, you parse an XML document. This is Brian. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you found this educational and entertaining. Kitten, I'm watching you. Quit touching that light bulb. Sorry, guys. Um, maybe next time I'll just lock the door and lock my demonic little cats out of here, even though they love me. Um, if you have any ideas for the 100th video, I'm really looking forward to your feedback. And I, am, I apologize once again. I'm still way behind on feedback. Um, 
unfortunately it's uh it's uh very difficult to come home from work and then plow through 100 plus emails but i'm trying um, try to keep your ideas for the hundredth video simple but unique um, try not to redo anything we've already done um, some of the ideas that i've had so far were an irc client um, basic uh, 3d graphics programming which that seems very tricky um, seeing how i have had absolutely zero experience in that um, what was another one? Oh, yeah, how to make uh, zip files, which we would have to backbone off a third-party library. Um, I actually kind of like that idea because it forces us to step outside our comfort zone. But anyways, I'm babbling. Uh, shoot me your ideas, and I'll see you next time.